Alright, so the function at hand is a partial derivative problem. We are, to for some function f of x, y, to find f sub theta theta given that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So this is a bit of a more challenging problem because we're not, giving a co we're not given a concrete function f of x, y. It's just supposed to remain abstract for us to uh, delineate some sort of function with. So let's go ahead and get started. The first way that I like to get started with these sort of problems is with a tree. So what we can recognize is that f, the function f, let me write it over here, f is a function of x and y, and x and y are both functions of r and theta. So if we are trying to find f sub theta theta, the way that we're going to do that is we're first going to have to take the partial derivative with respect to theta once and then once again. So let's just start off with the first partial derivative, f sub theta. What this is going to be is another way we can consider this is d df by d theta. And just a side note, the reason why we have these little curly d's as opposed to the straight d's we see in regular derivatives is because this is a partial derivative as opposed to a... Um, a whole derivative, I guess. But the way that we're going to calculate this is by df by dx times dx by d theta plus df by dy times dy by d theta. This is what we consider the chain rule. Uh, and this works because in order to get from f to theta, we first have to go through x and through y. And so what we consider is that we have to go through each partial derivative in order to get there. Um, another way to think about this is whenever we multiply these out, so df by dx times dx by d theta, this dx is going to cancel out on both the denominator and the numerator up here. Um, that's one way to think about it, even though that's not really what's going on. But it's a good mnemonic, a good way to remember how what this actual formula is. So let's go ahead and start figuring out what this actually calculates to. So df by dx is just going to be f sub x. And we can't simplify that any further because we're not given an actual function f of x, y. We're just left with this abstract um, function up here. And so we just say f sub x. dx by d theta, however, can be calculated. We know that x equals r cosine theta, and so we're just going to take the partial derivative of this thing with respect to theta. Remember that we have to do that by considering that r is a constant, and the cosine function is what we're actually deriving. So this is just going to be negative r sine theta. All right. As for df by dy, this is just going to be f sub y, same reasoning with this f sub x over here, and then dy by d theta is based off of this function, and this is just going to be r cosine theta. All right, and so this is f sub theta. Wonderful, so now that we've got this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider that this is equal to g, well actually first of all, one thing we can recognize about this particular function is we can simplify it a little bit. This thing right here is going to be y, because that's what r sine theta is, and this thing right here is x. And so simplifying this, we can say that f sub theta is equal to f sub x, I'll put a negative sign out front, times y, plus f sub y times x. And I'm going to consider this function to be a function of x and y, because that's all we've got here, right? x's and y's. And so this is just going to be g of x, y. That's what I'm going to consider it. All right, so now that we've got through the first step, what we need to do now is we need to figure out what f theta theta is equal to. The way that we go about doing this is we have to take the partial derivative of this function g with respect to theta. So this is the same thing as g sub theta. 
All right? And so, just like earlier, we're going to write out the formula. We're going to use the chain rule to figure out what this is going to be equal to. So g sub theta is just going to be dg by dx times dx by d theta plus dg by dy times dy by d theta. Okay? So let's go ahead and write this out. This is going to be equal to g sub x times, and then we've got dx by d theta, which we've calculated already, and we know that this is negative r sine theta plus g sub y times r cosine theta. Except we're not quite finished here. We have this g sub y and this g sub x. What these are going to be is these are going to be the partial derivatives of this function up here with respect to those different variables. So first let's calculate what g sub x is equal to. g sub x is going to be the partial derivative of this whole thing with respect to x. So for the first term, we know that the partial derivative of this thing is just going to be negative fxx times y because what we do is we consider y to be a constant plus f sub xy times x plus f sub y times 1. So let me go back and explain how I got this. What we know is that we know f is really a function of x and y. And so whenever we take the partial derivative over here, so like f sub x, this is really f sub xy of x. So this is a partial derivative of something that's a function of x and y. And so down here, since we only have one term in this, in this term right here that has an x, it's going to be this function we don't have to do any chain rule stuff. We just consider that y is a constant and therefore it just stays there and we just take the derivative of the function itself. And so we're left with negative fxx times y. Over here, however, both terms have an x. The function, which is a function of x and y, has an x and then there's an x multiplied by it. And so we have to do the chain rule. We recognize that the first piece of the chain rule is taking the partial derivative of this thing with respect to x, which is just fxy. And then we treat the next part as a constant, so we multiply by x. And then the next piece of the chain rule is just going to be the function itself treated as a constant times the derivative of x with respect to x, which we know is 1. I guess I could write 1 down here to add a little bit of clarity. All right, so this is what g sub x is equal to. Now we should figure out what g sub y is equal to. It's going to be very similar, but a little bit different. So now we recognize that this first piece, each term, each piece of the term has uh, y's in it. So we're going to have to do the chain rule. So first, we are going to have negative f x y times y plus um, I guess that could be a minus, so minus f sub x times 1. And then this piece over here, the derivative of that with respect to y is just going to be f sub y y times x. Alright, so now that we've got all that, all we have to do is put it all together and simplify. Alright? So whenever we do that, we're going to have, let me go ahead and get a new piece of paper.
whenever we put this all together, we are going to be left with So everything that g sub x is equal to, so we're going to get negative fxx times y plus fxy times x plus f sub y times negative r sine theta. plus everything that g sub y is equal to, so negative fxy times y minus f sub x plus f sub yy times x multiplied by r cosine theta. And now distributing everything, we're going to come up with f x x y r sine theta m plus f x y times x. I guess this is minus r sine theta plus f sub y. Again, this is a minus, goodness, r sine theta. Minus fxy times y r cosine theta minus fx r cosine theta plus fyy times x r cosine theta. And before we go on, we're going to go ahead and want to put everything in terms of r and theta. So anytime we see an x or y, we're going to want to replace that with what it's actually equal to. So let's do that. We get fxx, and then this is r sine theta, so we're going to get r squared sine squared theta minus fxy, r squared sine theta 